Train the muscles, not the joints. Train some chest yesterday. Today I'm gonna to train, uh, I'll do some chest and back again. I did some chest and back yesterday and some legs. Today I'm gonna to do, I think a whole body workout. We're gonna see how it feels here. But I'm going to do some partial reps, some full reps and partial reps for chest. Uh, full reps for me, okay, for you sarcastic bastards out there. But reps that I like to do, and then I'm gonna just do little short ones, squeezing at the top, just to get some extra chest development. I don't want my delts to become the weak link, right? That's okay, but I'm gonna do a few more sets of more full reps, and then I'll finish off with some really light pumpers uh, at the top. That's just what feels right to me today, so we'll see. Like I said before, I'm pretty careful with the dumbbell presses right now because my pec was feeling a little weird for a while there. It's feeling pretty good now, but I can push with heavier weight, but I don't want to, and I can strain into failure a little bit more. But the thing is, the more unstable a movement is, the less you want to push into failure. That's a secret tip right there. Because instability with failure, that can lead to injury more so, right? So that's why I'm a little careful with the dumbbells. Plus, this is the second or third day training chest in a row, so that's the other factor, right? I kind of warmed up then I'll push her a little bit more right so kind of get revved right
technique, but it just focuses on one part of the range of motion because your pec starts, or your pec actually stops the momentum. Whereas sometimes if you come all the way down, it's actually your delt that stops the momentum, so your delt actually takes a lot of stress. So if you want to really just hit your pecs, that might be a technique that works for you. So here I am doing some seated rows, and a great technique to employ during your seated rows, or any of your back training actually, is to visualize that you are a puppet. And it's like there's strings attached to your elbows, and the puppet master is pulling those strings, so that way you are leading with the elbow when you are coming back with your back training. So you're not feeling the need to overbend the arm. You know, you're just bending it just enough to get that arm uh, basically to be straight in alignment with the force, right? So if you notice that your forearm is not making a straight arrow towards the line of force, that means that you're probably including too much of the bicep. You're probably bending the arm a little bit too much and you're not actually including the back. So yeah, try that out and see how that feels. remember to stick that chest out you know stick that chest out and pull the shoulders back pull the shoulder blades back that's the most important part of the movement you know secondary is how much the arms are bending and and how much rotation is going on around the shoulders right so just make sure you pull those elbows back stick the chest out and you'll get a lot of rhomboid involvement and trap involvement and lat involvement in that right so you're going to get the whole back you're going to really include the whole back from training this way So this is something similar to the lat pullover, uh, but with a cable, right? So it's, it's not the tricep press down. I do keep the elbows slightly bent, but I keep them locked in position and I make sure I keep my elbows in and my chest out. So I'm really squeezing those lats and this helps you really establish that mind muscle connection between you and your lats. So if any of you guys out there have a hard time feeling your lats, have a hard time doing a lat spread, this is a great exercise to work on. And uh, it's, it's something neat because it adds that stretch component to the lats and isolation at the same time. Now remember, this is an isolation exercise. It's not meant to be uh, done in the five rep range because so much of it is about how you are doing the movement, right? So some people were asking me about super high rep sets like 150 reps and all this kind of stuff. You know, sometimes doing a high rep set like that will change the way you do the movement and perhaps you will get more mind muscle connection under certain circumstances. And this is one of those exercises where I do advocate a little bit higher reps because if you do too heavy, you'll start to recruit the wrong muscles. You start to recruit the internal rotators. You start to try to bring the tricep in there. And you know, so it's really imperative that you use the right weight so that way you're activating the right muscle groups. Now you may notice that you need to bend over or be more straight up and down depending on the machine and depending on the angle of force, right? That's the great part about the cables. You can actually adjust the angle. You can adjust how you're standing just so you're hitting that perfect sweet spot. So it's all on the lats, all the stress is on the lats.
So yeah, I'm doing a little bit more of the pullover type cable movements. Uh, the reason why is because I just want to stretch those lats out and I haven't done that for a long time. So this last week or two I've been concentrating on doing those because whatever you haven't done for a while will usually yield the best results for you, right? Now I love it when this happens, when I get to stay on the same machine but do a totally different exercise. So now I'm doing triceps and you'll notice that all the movement or most of the movement is happening around the elbow joint now. You know, and although there may be some forward and back movement of the shoulder because the tricep does assist with that a little bit, that's not the main action of this, like with the lat movement or the pullover movement, right? So yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit different angles. So first I step away from the rack, then I step closer. And uh, the first few sets, I just do that, uh, you know, you could call it a giant set, you know, two different variations of the press down. And then uh, after I do that a couple times, then I started to do a walkout or a walking outwards lunge. Okay, so uh, lunging type tricep press out, press out, I guess you could call it. Okay, so those of you that have purchased the program, I mentioned a pressing out type movement with the cable. Uh, you will see that's exactly what I mean is, is when I'm stepping away from the rack and the cable is over my head and I'm stretching that long head of the tricep. So yeah. Try this out, it's, it's really great superset or giant set. You know, you do a number of different angles all at once and I get a really great pump from it. As you can see, I'm adjusting the weights as I go. And why am I doing this? Do I have a number in my head? No, it's not about a number, it's more about a feel. And I'm finding the weight that I feel the most tricep involvement with the least amount of delt involvement and I'm and trying to not recruit other muscle groups, right? So there's a certain sweet spot for the weight, like the right weight that feels like I'm really contracting the tricep and really getting the stretch on there and the tension is staying on the tricep, right? So sometimes this will change also from a tricep extension type movement to more of a pressing type movement. So you'll see I'm doing tricep extension here, but at some point it's almost looking like I'm doing a hybrid between a press and a tricep extension uh, because I find that's the way I can go deeper into the failure with the tricep. To some rear delts. Now, here's an example of, you know, based on the video that I just made on traps, you can see how my shoulder blades come forward, you know, how I, they stretch apart. And then as I bring the arms backwards, you can see the contraction of the trap in between the shoulder blades and the rhomboids as well. So this is how I get a lot of trap work. Now I do this with dumbbells as well. Sometimes I'll do a dumbbell bent over lateral raise where there's an external rotation involved in there. And some people say, oh, that's the wrong way to do it. That's the wrong way to do it. It's like, no, actually I get a lot of rear delt as well as trap. I get an overall upper back development from that. So if you're really looking to hit those traps, this is a great way to do it. It's, it's one variation or one way. And uh, I find that it helps really balance out 
all the pressing and stuff. There's a guy in the gym right now. He's he's pressing all the time every day, and he's probably watching this video right now. But he presses all the time. He's always doing presses, so his shoulders are rolled forward, and that's just an injury waiting to happen. And of course, based on some of the you know sports injuries that I have from hockey and all this, I definitely have to be conscious of balancing out the forward force that I have from the pecs, you know, the squeezing and the retractions or the protraction, you could say. And then I got to increase my strength in my retraction muscles, such as the trap and the back to make sure it's all balanced out. So this is a really great way to rehabilitate yourself or to keep yourself from injuring your shoulders, from having them impinge or sit improperly in the joints. You want to strengthen up the back part as well. for the day it's not about what you did last week or whatever because there's a lot of other factors like for instance I worked legs yesterday right so uh, and in a similar range of motion too I did one legged squats right so that's pretty similar to walking lunges but yeah well do a few more sets right sometimes you get the most growth when you're not actually the strongest you're actually working out when you're a little sore so Well, that concludes the workout. I just did some light lunges there, 70 pound dumbbells. It's pretty easy. But I'm just trying to go through the motions, just stretch the area out, get some blood in there. And then, you know, tomorrow I'll do some stiff legged deadlifts or some Romanian deadlifts. And then maybe in a couple days I'll do some squats, right? So 
I kind of cycle the leg exercises. I kind of go through all the leg exercises depending on what day I'm on and whatever. I take turns with all the different leg exercises and I go through them and uh, I just try not to do stiff legged deadlifts right before squats because that might be causing a little bit of a lower back problem. So I try to kind of space that out. So I might do some Romanian deadlifts and then go do leg press for a day and then go to squat, right? But yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Visit me at Natural Gland Bodybuilding and take care for now. There you go, train the muscles, not the joints. Guaranteed to make your back bigger. Guaranteed.